Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to learn about advanced mirroring on Arista switches. For the purposes of this demonstration, I would be using the VEOS instance. The VEOS instance allows me to configure the different advanced mirroring commands, such as capturing packets as they arrive an interface and leave an interface and sending it to a different interface and even to multiple destination interfaces. I could also capture packets as they arrive and leave an interface and send it to the CPU as well, amongst other features that I'll be showing you. However, the actual implementation of these features is done in hardware. So if you are going to test out how this works in production or how if you want to actually you know monitor those traffic that you capture to the CPU for example you will not be able to do that with VOS you will need a real hardware for that and not all Arista hardware switches support um, sending traffic you capture and sending traffic that you receive on an interface or traffic that you send from an interface to a CPU so some platforms support span sessions to the CPU and some don't so if I was going to configure a simple span session that captured packets on one interface, say Ethernet 1, I would do the monitor session 1 source Ethernet 1. And then if I do a question mark after that, I could capture both directions or I could capture RX or TX. So by default, it captures traffic in both directions. If I wanted to do just RX, I could say I'm interested in only receive traffic. And then I have the ability to assign an access list to this interface that would further limit what packets I'm interested in or a MAC access list as well in the case of a MAC option, right? So the next thing I do is I need to specify a destination. So where do I want to send these captured packets to? I could either send it to the CPU or I could send it to another Ethernet interface or a port channel or I could send it to all of them. In this case, I'm going to send it to the CPU and I'm also going to send it to, let's say, Ethernet 2. So in order to verify this, I, I run the show monitor session command. And as you can see, I'm capturing traffic in both directions. And I am actually sending that those traffic to the CPU and to Ethernet 2. So let's say I wanted to limit traffic capture to just one direction. So I'm going to run Ethernet 1 and then I say RX. So I'm just interested in RX traffic only. So now I've limited traffic capture to just RX traffic on Ethernet 1 and I am sending that to my CPU and another interface, Ethernet 2. I could also add another interface if I needed to send it to another capture station connected to Ethernet 3. I could run monitor session 1, destination Ethernet 3. And then now I'll have three destinations for the capture traffic on this interface. So I'll show monitor session one. And as you can see, I'm sending it to the CPU, to Ethernet 2 and Ethernet 3. Now you can see here you have mirror zero. This is an interface that is automatically created when you capture traffic to the when you capture traffic on an interface and send it to a CPU on an Arista switch. If this were a real switch, I'll be able to now run the TCP dump tool on this mirror interface to show me, the re in this case, the received traffic on Ethernet 1. So the device doesn't exist because it, these features are implemented in hardware. So the next thing I actually like to show you is how you can actually limit the traffic you are interested in on Ethernet 1, for example. So you can use an access list to say, I, I don't care about every single traffic on this interface. I'm only interested in all IP traffic from this host to this host. So I could create an access list, call it test1, and then I could say permit IP from 10.1.102 slash 32 to 10.1.103 slash 32. This is the only traffic I'm interested in. And then I could apply the access list to my monitor session. So I say monitor session one IP access group test one. And that's all you need to do in terms of um, restricting traffic that you're interested in on a particular span session.
Now, another thing I would like to talk about is the truncate option. So let's say I want to further restrict things. I want to actually re restrict things even further. And the truncate option allows me to do that. So in a real switch, you actually have the option to specify truncate after your monitor session um, global configuration command. And what this does is instead of capturing the entire packet, it actually limits the packet to the first 160 bytes. So every single packet is only going to look at the first 160 bytes and it's going to save that. And it's going to send that to your monitor destinations. So this might be useful if you don't have enough storage space on your monitoring stations connected to Ethernet 1, Ethernet 3, and you're just interested in just the headers. You don't care about the rest of the stuff in the packet, like what's in the data field, for example. So this might be a useful feature for that. Another thing I also want to talk about is timestamping. So you have the ability to timestamp packets as they arrive on Ethernet 1 interface, for example. And you do that using the mac timestamp command. So I could go mac timestamp. And then if this were a real hardware switch, I would have the option of before FCS or replace FCS. So there will be two options which I can choose. So if I chose the before FCS function, what that's going to do is the timestamp field will then replace the original CRC field. And then a new CRC will be calculated and appended to the, to the frame. So that would now be after your timestamp field. However, if I was using the replace FCS function, the timestamp field would just replace the CRC field and no new CRC would be generated. So that's pretty much all the things I think we need to cover. I hope this video was useful for you and I'd like to thank you very much for listening.